Uh, first off, I think uh, great pitches. They're so creative. I'm, uh, I'm really happy to be part of. I thought that was really great so far. Um, yeah, so let's jump into, uh, into our pitch. So we are Finger Lemon, and uh, we want to uh, tell, talk a little bit about today how you can maybe automate your qualitative research. Um, do, do, do. There we go. So um, let's say you want to get the opinion of your of participants of a survey. You have two options. You have a form. Um, so that's something like a Google form you can design with questions. And the downside of that is usually that it has low engagement. And you also have limited interaction, which means that the users are bound to what you ask them. On the other hand, if you want to collect qualitative data for your research, you can do interviews. And interviews work great. They're just very time consuming. And also, you get so much data that you need to analyze that can be quite tedious. And uh, we identified a use case where we think that neither of these cases are really useful and ideal. And that is uh, clinical research. So we talked to the head of clinical research of a pharmaceutical company called Johnson & Johnson. And uh, essentially what they do, they, they want to uh, develop a new drug. They need people to try out the drug and, and uh, follow a procedure to see that the drug doesn't have any side effects and that, it's, that it is effective and so on. And one part of this procedure is that um, you need to go to the doctor. And when we asked them how they collect information, uh, they said that they interact with participants at most once a month, so when they go to the doctor. But uh, we don't have any information on what is happening in between the visits. So when the participants uh, visit the doctor, um, then you can check all his status, his his uh, his uh, blood uh, information, and so on. But uh, you can only check it then. But they would like to know what happens in between those visits. And uh, for that, we uh, we made a solution that is chatbot as a service. And uh, what it's supposed to help you is to really check up and get in connection and stay in connection with participants of uh, of drug trials, for instance. Uh, so how this would work is just um, you have your phone and you you every day you get a message on how do you feel today, and then you can say uh, in this case if you can read it in the bottom left it says I feel some nausea and also a headache, and um, and then what we do is we we take this information from the from the participant and. We analyze the text that he wrote. So in this case, you can see on the right side that we identified under symptoms that he wrote he had nausea and a headache. And we can also see when he had it. So there's a timestamp to that. And what we believe this does is it really helps you to, you know, keep tracking how is how are people doing? How is their well-being? Does this drug have any side effect? What is the condition on it? And this just opens up all the time frame between the uh, beginning of the month when you had your doctor's appointment to the next month. You can tell everything that happened in between. Um, so yeah, so that was a use case of what we want with our chatbot as a service. And in general, what we want to do is um, we want to reach participants anywhere. So we are not a platform where you have to sign up. No, you can. We can work through your messenger. If you use Facebook Messenger, we can work through email. Uh, but my favorite is SMS because everybody uses SMS on their phone. And uh, yeah, and then you can just answer the question that is needed. In this case, for clinical trials, it's about the well being. So the question, how are you doing? Uh, you get a question, you answer every day, whenever you want, how you're feeling today. And then what we do is we do um, natural language processing on top of your answer. And we extract the key information, as you saw before, nausea and a headache. And uh, yeah, and we want to do this in a scheduled way. So depending on the use case, you can do this once a month or every day if it's a clinical trial. I hope that's understandable. And yeah, so 
the team. Um, it is me, so I'm part of the data analytics, the natural language processing that takes the message from participants and understands the information, extracts it, and makes it structured uh, structurally available for the researchers to analyze. And uh, with me is Vincent, who came up with this idea, and he's in charge of the product development, and he's been working with uh, um, web apps and uh, and um, like software design before. Um, so yeah, that's our product. Thank you so much. If you think this could be useful for your research, uh, for your qualitative research, you can of course reach out to us, and uh, I think we can help you. Yeah, thanks. thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Jordi. Uh, time for uh, some questions. Uh, first of all, we start again with some questions from the jury. Um, I see uh, there's a question from Karin there. Uh, would you like yeah. to start? Yes, I would like to start. I have multiple questions, but uh, first of all, I'd like to know if uh, how far are you in your uh, roadmap? Do you already have the product for the market, or do you already uh, or are you still in the uh, trial phase with this clinical uh, research? And um, yeah, so uh, we are, in fact, compared to other participants here, uh, rather in the early phase. So yeah. we have um, we what you saw before with the chat and the analysis. That's from our prototype, the software we made, um, and we are now trying it out with uh, with our first um, use case. So we are not really established in the way other other participants are uh, in this competition. But yeah, that's our status. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Can you you can you can use? Sorry, to take a second question. You can use the chat box uh, also for other markets than just this clinical one. I assume, right? Uh, you can, but uh, what we believe is um, it's good to focus on something and do it really well. So uh, while chatbots have a very very wide functionality and they are used in a very wide branch of industries. Um, that's something that we're targeting at first, yeah. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to another question. Uh, I think there's some questions from uh, Oti there as well. Yes, um, have you thought about the security of your system? Because of course this uh, health data is very sensitive. Yeah, uh, that's correct. Um, and you're right with that. So. Um, there are some, um, for health data, it's uh, even more sensitive. So you need to follow the data laws uh, where you operate. So in, in Europe, it would be GDPR and plus. Um, but we were actually talking with um, legal before from KTH, we got some advice. And uh, so that the short answer is yes, it's possible. It needs to be considered, but it can be executed upon. So it's, it's possible. Okay, let's have one more question from the jury uh, and then uh, one from the audience. Um, Hani, would you like to, to ask something? Yeah, two very quick questions. Together, have you considered audio along with text? And then how do you make money beside cost per request? Um, okay, sure, thanks for the question. Um, audio would be interesting. That would be something like voice notes that you then have to translate into text and analyze it. Uh, we have not uh, we have not worked on it yet, um, but it would be interesting for sure. And for the business model, um, no, I think cost per request is just uh, something that we see fit to our service. So if you're if you're a researcher and you need to get data, the more data you get from us, the more you pay. So you just pay per incoming data. That's uh, yeah, that's the business model behind it. Quite simple. Okay, thanks a lot. Let's then finally give the floor to the voice of our audience, uh, Jose Carlos, to ask a question on behalf of the, <laughs> of the yeah, people. So the Mehul has a question regarding the, the, the complexity of the information that you can analyze. So besides uh, identifying keywords, uh, do you also have some sort of scale on which the participant can mention, for example, whether they had a light headache or a heavy one? So are you able to distinguish different degrees on this scale of symptoms? Um, yeah, good question. So uh, yeah, essentially 
what we can do on the technical aspect of it is um, if we're not very certain that we identified the important information, uh, what you can do is like a callback. It's just like a question, or oh, did you mean this? Or on a scale from one to 10, how heavy is it? So those are definitely things that are supported. So if you have a headache, you can uh, make a question forward, like on top of that information that you provided and get a little bit more information. Or if you're not sure, you can ask again, our understanding is that you have this, is this correct? And then you can just answer yes or no, or, or something different. Okay, thank you very much for uh, the presentation and for answering all the questions.